Hi friends, you recently let me come at you with 25 plants I cannot stand, so I thought the least I could do in return was give you a minimum of 25 plants that I love. The amount of plants that I love far surpasses the amount of plants that I don't love, but these are just the first 25 to come to my mind. Before we get started, have you ever heard of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast? Well, my friend Maria Faella, the host of the pod, has been creating some really amazing videos over on her YouTube channel, offering some really insightful content into both indoor and outdoor gardening. If you enjoy plant videos, I highly recommend checking out her channel, which of course I will leave linked to my description below. I'm really loving her videos, and I know you will too. Anyway, here is 25 plants I absolutely love. Golden Pothos, the most quintessential houseplant in my opinion. It's incredibly accessible, fits every style of home, grows incredibly fast, and will perform fine in pretty much any lighting condition. You can have it trailing, hanging, climbing, or creeping. It's a very versatile houseplant. Plus, there's a lot of fun varieties out there and always new ones being cultivated, but I would consider the golden pothos to be a must-have for every indoor gardener. Staghorn fern. Often sold or grown mounted, this is an amazing plant to treat as a piece of art in your home. I like to grow them tied to a piece of wood and display it on my wall, and as long as they're in good enough lighting conditions, I find them extremely easy to grow. Whenever someone new comes to my home, they always ask me about it, and they're always in disbelief whenever I tell them that it's a fern. It's just not what our mind registers when we think of a fern. Super cool. Amidrium zipelianum. I've had one for a couple of years, and it did take me a little while to get the care right, but I just love the little tiny palm frond like leaves, and it's just overall a plant that really caught my attention before I ever added it to my collection. Calathea orbifolia. When I was a beginner indoor gardener, I fell in love with calatheas. They are just very gorgeous houseplants, and at one point I had over 20 varieties in my home, but without the right conditions, they are very difficult to maintain. The species orbifolia, however, I've always found to be a lot easier to grow, and I've always really enjoyed the look, but at at this point, it's probably the only Calathea I would truly recommend. Chinese Evergreens. One of the best options for plant styling, Chinese Evergreens come in pretty much every single color and pattern imaginable, so there's at least one, if not ten, for everybody. They're easy to grow in most home conditions and will tolerate neglect fairly well. Some of my favorite varieties are the Red Emerald, the Spring Snow, the Pictum, the Chocolate, and the Stripes. There are so many more varieties that I love though, I'm just trying to limit myself to five. Schifflera Nova. My all-time favorite houseplant. The leaf shape is stellar and the overall look is just top-notch. Umbrella trees are a great option for floor plants, but this one just is taken to the next level, in my own opinion. Unfortunately, it's a bit difficult to get your hands on though, which I desperately hope changes because I truly think this plant would be one that's used very often in plant styling. Hoya multiflora. This species of Hoya is not nearly as popular as many of the others, probably because it looks so different, but it's a classic, blooms easily, and the flowers, while small, are showstoppers. Peperomia quadrangularis. There are a lot of peperomias that have a very similar overall look to this plant that I would also lump in with this one, but this is the first one of those that I added to my collection, so of course I have a soft spot for it. I really adore the leaves. I don't know why, but they just really do it for me. Highly recommend. Dracaena Janet Craig. It is a very plain looking plant, but that's kind of what I love about it. It's a floor plant that's not going to be a focal point, so if you really want to fill up your home with greenery fast and make it feel like a jungle, this is one of the best options to do so. Sansevieria pinguicula. Commonly called the walking Sansevieria, this variety of snake plant grows above the soil surface with its roots suspending it in the air. It has a lot of novelty, that is for sure, but the leaf tips are extremely sharp and borderline a hazard, so if you are going to bring one of these home, just make sure you put it somewhere safe. Talansia tectorum. The air plant that got me into air plants. The fuzzy pale white leaves on this turn green when watered, so it's a lot of fun to either create or watch time lapses of these drying out. In its natural habitat, it's growing in very dry conditions so it's a very drought tolerant houseplant, making it a great option if you've maybe failed with air plants in the past for forgetting to water them. I've done that. And the different ways to display them are endless, so you can really get creative with these as long as they're near a window. Philodendron Florida. There are lots of philodendrons with the same exact leaf shape, which I absolutely love, but this variety is the one that I find to be the easiest to grow, the easiest to find, and the most inexpensive. And really the best looking, to be honest. Syndapsis pictus. It grows extremely fast and is probably tied in first place with the golden pot those for the best, most accessible trailing houseplant. There are a lot of varieties, all of which are great by the way, but the smaller leaf variety is going to be the fastest grower in my experience. Peperomia incana. I am obsessed with how fuzzy this plant is, and that combined with the blue hue makes this plant really tolerant of bright light, making it a really excellent option for any harsh south or west facing windowsills. Austral gem fern. This fern literally looks fake, and it's pretty hardy as far as ferns go. If you love the look of ferns, but you've maybe struggled with the more frilly 
frilly or fragile ones, I would highly recommend giving this one a try. Dracaena goldiana, a newer plant for me, but I'm really loving its appearance. It has all the looks of a calathea with the leaf patterns and the purple undersides and everything, but without the headache of actually growing a calathea. Discidia ovata. I've always been drawn to this species of Discidia because most Discidia have really plain green leaves, but this one has a really fun out there watermelon skin-like pattern. It looks great as both a trailing plant or a mounted plant, so you've got a couple of options there. And while it's a slow grower, I totally think it's worth the wait. String of Hearts, an absolutely adorable trailing house plant. It's best grown in bright light conditions to keep those leaves developing larger and more succulent, and is a very fast grower in those conditions. The variegated variety is also great, it just grows a lot slower. False Aurelia, admittedly underwhelming when they are small or bush-like, which is what they're usually sold as at the plant stores. Once this starts to form some character and becomes more tree-like, this plant becomes something else. The jagged palmate leaves remind me a lot of my Schaeffler Nova, so obviously I have a soft spot for it, but the dark, nearly black foliage and the small dainty leaves really set it apart. Plus they're incredibly easy to find, usually always in stock at the big box stores. Dracaena reflexa, one of the most common large floor plants with the most character. There are a couple different varieties to choose from, but I would actually recommend the plain green variety over all of the fun colored varieties because, well, first and foremost, the plain green variety requires far less light than all of those colored varieties. And two, those plain green leaves, especially when you are working with a larger specimen, are really going to stand out amongst all of those wacky and wild brown trunks that are usually all over the place on the larger specimens. So they have a lot of character and they will garner some attention, but they will not demand all the attention in the room. And that is one of the best traits that a floor plant can have. Hoya curtisii. I just love the look of these leaves. They're just so dainty and cute. I already have one in my home that looks amazing, but every single time I see like a little four inch pot at the plant store, I'm always appreciating them so much and considering bringing home a second one because I do really love mine. But I know in my heart of hearts, I gotta save that space for other plants. Creeping Fig. They are definitely difficult to maintain at first, but they have like the most ethereal cottage core like appearance out of any houseplant I can even imagine. So of course I appreciate it for that. Plus there are just so many tree like options when it comes to ficus. So it is really nice seeing something a little bit different. Tenanthi Burl Marxii. Tenanthes are prayer plants, which are a group of plants that are known for being beautiful, but infamous for being difficult to grow. Tenanthes, however, I find to be the easiest genus of prayer plant with the Burl Marxii variety offering you all that same character that Marantas and Calatheas have without all the issues. Peperomia elongata. Peperomias typically have pretty small leaves, so the large shiny leaves on this plant really allow it to stand out. I've never found it easy to grow, I will admit, but the look alone keeps me coming back for more. There are a couple similar looking varieties of Peperomia, but at this moment the elongata is the most inexpensive and easiest to find of all those varieties in the United States. Philodendron tripartitum. I find the leaves beautifully simplistic. There's no leaf pattern or texture or veination, just plain green leaves in, as the name suggests, three parts and I just love that for this plant. Because of its simplicity, it is not as popular as some of the other philodendrons on the market, but should be a contender because its leaves mature very easily and it's just a staple here in my home. I have it right behind me here. So how could I not have a soft spot for this plant? And that's 25. There are so many more plants that I love. As I mentioned, these were just the first 25 to come to my mind. I'm sure I could keep going if you want another 25 more. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite plants. You don't have to list 25. You can if you want to, I'm not gonna stop you, but yeah, let me know. Thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, consider doing so, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.